Crime is on the rise underground. This will be the first time ever these cars have been deployed in North America. Subway pushings have long prompted for a search for solutions, and as New Yorkers continue getting shoved onto the tracks. Today, we'll be showing you the many changes the MTA is making to the New York City subway system to stop crime in its tracks. We're starting with a brand new subway car that was just released this past month with some anti-crime technology, the R211T. And this new subway is only running right now on the C line, so there's only two in service, so you actually have to be pretty lucky to even catch it right now. Right, it feels like we're about to step into the future with those green lights there. I mean, the first thing I notice is just how much wider the door is. We're talking about from like a safety perspective. If you're coming in with a wheelchair or a stroller, much safer. Love those doors. Now the biggest change here, and this is the only train in North America quite like this, is the accordion dividers every 65 feet. And obviously the, the open gangway, this is the big difference maker. You could walk the entire length of this train legally. Now one crime this is attempting to prevent is subway surfing because you can't access the roof of the train from here anymore. You can't stand outside and just ride. You're enclosed. But at the same time, I have to admit, like psychologically, having an open train does feel a lot nicer. It feels like we're in a more modern city. You know, as far as crime stopping is concerned, I think this is a bit of a double-edged sword, the open gangway, because the argument is, well, if somebody's harassing you, if somebody's acting erratic, you don't have to wait for the next station to get up and switch to another car. You could just walk right through yourself. But on the flip side, someone could follow you between the cars as well. Also, this, this open gangway is modeling Paris, it's modeling London, it's bringing New York to the modern era. The other big change, I have never seen so many cameras on a subway before in New York City. And these are constantly being monitored by the police, I've been told. Now again, a camera is not a police officer on every subway car. Still, the argument goes, having cameras is going to prevent some crime if people know that they're being filmed. I love it. I, I've never seen it where it tells you the stop clearly and what door you're gonna be exiting from. And if you're still unsure, that green light will show you. But the modernization here is what impresses me a lot. This is also really clear from the ridership perspective, not really crime perspective, how many stops you have left. Very simple to use. I think simplifying the New York City subway is pretty helpful. Look, even shows you where the exits are, what car you're on. It's like having City Mapper, the app, right on the train. Every single ad on this train is completely digital, which I've also never seen before. Also like the, the bright new colors of these seats here. I suppose the argument could be made if you're, I don't know, if you're feeling better during your commute, you got more space, you're less likely to lash out. This is definitely an improvement, I have to say. As someone that rides the subway a lot, this is really, really cool. So it's definitely cleaner. It's definitely brighter and general. I liked it better than your average C train. As far as the crime stopping, cameras are useful. And I know during the mass shooting a few years ago in Sunset Park, a lot of the cameras malfunction in the stations. And if they had cameras in every single subway car, it would have been very helpful for the investigation. Not all New Yorkers though are so optimistic about this new train. Damn, now we can't even escape from the smells or smoking in the cart. Incredible, shaking my head. God forbid there is a fire on board the train for any reason. How would you contain it to one area of this train? Easier for criminals to just walk through each car to look for victims. Not a good idea. Let's see how long it will take subway riders to start complaining. The separated cars are more like a protected hub from smells, weirdos, and other unpleasant trees. Now you won't be able to get away from them. This is your standard C train. It's old. I don't see any cameras. The only way you're getting anybody's attention is by ringing the intercom to talk to the conductor or sitting in the conductor's car. But yeah, adding the cameras is nice. And of course, you have to move between the cars the old fashioned way, which you're not supposed to with those sliding doors. I think the truth is that unless you had police on every single subway car, it would be pretty much impossible to completely stop all forms of subway crime. You are staring at the pilot program in the New York City subway right now, these yellow safety barriers. They're gonna be put into four different subway stations, Clark Street, which we're at, 191st Street in Washington Heights, and then also at West 8th New York Aquarium, and the fourth spot is to be determined. Now, one of the main things this is trying to prevent are people trespassing onto the tracks because subway surfing has become a real problem in New York City. 
The other thing would be subway shovings, which was a really big point of focus last year. Haven't heard as much about it in 2024, thankfully. Now the way that these barriers have been set up does allow for the subways to pass by, for the doors to open, and for there to be no obstruction. Now the obvious glaring deficiency here is that, yeah, this would protect you from being shoved if you weren't paying attention. If you're standing here, if you're standing here, not as much. And as far as subway trespassing, well, I don't think it would be too difficult if somebody really wanted to go onto the tracks to just step around is. Something else they're also looking to prevent are people who have medical conditions. If you happen to faint or think that you're at risk of fainting or anything else, stand behind here so you don't fall onto the tracks. I certainly see a use for this, but I think a lot of people really would love New York to get those sliding glass doors that you see, let's say in London. In 2022, the MTA's Track Trespassing Task Force released a report which found track trespassing incidents increased 20% from 2019 to 2021. A trend that says continued into 2022, and the agency hopes this effort could help prevent that. Now, back in 2023, there was a discussion to pilot a sliding protective platform barrier system at three stations, including 42nd Street, and that would certainly be a great protective measure for New Yorkers. But a 2020 study by the MTA found that platform doors could be installed at just 128 of the subway system's 472 stations. And even then, the transit agency's estimated cost $7 billion. Some other ideas that they had, hip height safety barriers installed at three stations in the middle of the platform, which I believe is what we're looking at here. A pilot program using front facing cameras and infrared sensors on trains to detect intrusions, stopping or slowing trains in response. Testing the use of video analytics technology to enhance existing camera installations, using AI to monitor live footage to detect dangerous behaviors that could lead to track intrusions. Installing track intrusion detection systems at five stations, or installing blue lights at three subway stations, which the MTA says has a calming effect and can even reduce suicides. This is an extremely old subway system and making the kind of modern changes that you see all over the world, well, it's just gonna cost a lot of money. It's as simple as that. The most common subway crime in the system, thankfully, is not assault. It's fare evasion, and it has gotten absolutely out of control in the city. We just did an entire video dedicated to the changes that the city is attempting to make to curb fare evasion. Transit officials estimate riders skipping the fare cost the agency $285 million back in 2022. And we showed you how they were experimenting at JFK Sutland Boulevard with the new sliding gates, but many of you were not impressed as we saw a lot of piggybacking going on. But there's another area that fare evasion is rampant and that involves emergency exit gates, like this one right here. In fact, it is the most common way that people were evading fares according to the MTA's fare evasion report. Now, one thing the city has been trying to do about that is hiring unarmed security to just stand in front of the emergency exit so people won't feel so brazen to do so, but they're gonna be experimenting with another tactic. The MTA taking new steps to crack down on what they are calling the super highway of fare evasion. There's a pilot program being installed at 138th Street at the 6th, the Flushing Ave JMZ lines, and the 59th Street and Lexington Avenue subway stations. And what they've done, it's pretty clever, is you push the emergency exit handle and it would take 15 seconds to open, which would frustrate people and they wouldn't use the emergency exit gate and they would just, you to leave normally and they wouldn't leave the emergency exit gates wide open for people to just come through. MTA officials said they chose those three stations because they have enough turnstiles for masses of riders to quickly escape actual emergencies like a fire or terrorist attack. Even if the gates won't open for 15 seconds, this is definitely a cheaper option than hiring unarmed security and people that actually need the emergency exits. I'm sure they would figure this out. Give the city credit for trying new things, but it's gonna be tough to stop fare evasion in its tracks. Fare evasion is definitely still rampant. We saw multiple people even doing it here in the last few minutes. Now that you know about the changes to the New York subway system, in this video, we share what's coming to the city in 2024. A lot of cool stuff. Watch this next.